Back in episode F11, we talked about how vehicles have evolved up to the point of the software-defined vehicle, but we didn't really talk about the software or what a software-defined vehicle really provides. And surely there's something to say about the role of software in the software-defined vehicle. Let's go find out. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. Welcome to this foundation level episode of Engineering the Jigsaw, foundation episode number 21. What is the role of software in the software defined vehicle? So in F11, I briefly mentioned that vehicle functions will change and grow. But what does that mean if we consider the software and the functions it provides? Well, Let's go see. Well, we'll start firstly by talking about some of the things that vehicles you can get today do that might make you think they're a software defined vehicle, but they are not software defined vehicles. So we might have software or functions that are optional that can be turned on or off. And it may be that we can turn those functions on off, or it might be that we go to a dealership to get them turned on or off and get them pay some money. Or it might even be we have to pay a subscription for those functions. Now, it's not the case for a software-defined vehicle that having functions that you can have optionally in the software make it a software-defined vehicle. That that's that's not what we're we're talking about. And if we think about kind of the basic hardware in the vehicle, we're not also make, talking about having to pay a subscription to make use of the hardware in the vehicle in some basic way. All the, the hardware in the vehicle should work, okay? So this is also not a, a really a software-defined vehicle if we have that kind of model for our software where we have to pay to, to just use the basic stuff. And when we're developing our software, we may, of course, introduce bugs some problems. Every line of code has a probability of introducing a problem or a bug. And being able to fix those bugs does not make a vehicle a software-defined vehicle. So being able to apply software updates does not mean we have a software-defined vehicle. Even in the case where we're able to use remote technology over the air to provide software updates, being able to update a single ECU to fix a problem does not make a vehicle a software defined vehicle. And similarly, on the subject of kind of over the air updates, if we're just getting new data that we can use, so for example, maybe new map data in the navigation system, then this again doesn't make a software defined vehicle. Additionally, it's quite common in vehicles today to have some kind of smartphone integration with smartphone mirroring technology that gives what's called digital continuity. So that means as you get into the car you, or, or the truck or the van or the bus, whatever it is you're driving, you plug your phone in and you get access to the same apps, the same podcasts you, you have on your phone outside the, the vehicle. So this again, it's quite common in modern vehicles, has been in vehicles actually for a number of years now. And this again, does not make a software defined vehicle if we have smartphone mirroring technology. Of course, we might find all of these things I've just talked about in a software defined vehicle, but a software defined vehicle is much more than what we've just talked about. So what is a software defined vehicle? Well, it's a vehicle where we continually have software and new functions added to it. The vehicle gets ever expanding capability from that new software that gets added. So maybe 
one day we were able to walk up to the car, it detects our mobile phone in our pocket and automatically unlocks something that it wasn't able to do before. We've not added any new hardware to the vehicle for it to do this. All those things, so a, a, a cellular connection that allows it to communicate and geofencing technology, the GPS, the, the door locking system, all of that stuff was already in the vehicle. But somebody's thought of a new way of making those things work together to provide a new function to us as the owner. Now, some of the functions that we get can be fun functions as well. So, for example, we could get a function that flashes the lights on our vehicle and plays a funny tune. Perhaps at Halloween, it's a slightly scary tune and the lights flash while the children are going past getting their, their doing their, their trick or treat. So this is a software defined vehicle where we're able to load in more and more functions over time. And it's not just to one particular ECU, it's potentially to many ECUs inside the vehicle. So the vehicle realizes more potential from its hardware over time. So going back to our kind of idea of we, you know, we, we have some hardware that's kind of hidden away and we've got to pay a subscription to access, that's really now hopefully clear why that's not a software defined vehicle. A software defined vehicle, all that basic access to the hardware is there and then we're layering new things on top. So that's a, the main thing about what a software defined vehicle provides. But how does it provide it to us as an owner? Well, it's really important that we shouldn't have to take our vehicle to a, a workshop, a, a garage or a dealership to, and, and have to pay money to apply these updates that are being provided to our, our vehicle. So we're able to accept them and apply them ourselves without a special tool. So maybe we, we can click on the user interface in our owner's app on our mobile device. Maybe we can just touch on the infotainment in the vehicle and our new capability will appear. And this is not just in the first few months after we get a vehicle. Okay, so we're not talking about fixes to the vehicle or new functions for a vehicle just very shortly after we bought it. I'm talking about for many, many years after purchase, the vehicle will continue to get new capability. So our vehicle gets better and better over time. And this means that a software defined vehicle is a vehicle that the owner may want to keep for longer. Okay, so you may not um, update your vehicle so quickly if it keeps getting better. As a summary, there are many vehicles today that exhibit some aspects of a software defined vehicle or that some people might even think makes them a software defined vehicle, but they are not. So having options enabled in software, having remotely applied updates for bug fixes or new data such as revised maps in the navigation system. And of course, having digital continuity through smartphone mirroring technology. These are all nice, but they are not everything that makes a software defined vehicle. A software defined vehicle is more. A software defined vehicle on top of those things also regularly gains new functions and not just for a short period of time, for many years. And this is a really new thing in, new, in vehicle development. Typically in vehicle development, we develop a vehicle, we launch it, we maybe find a couple of things that need to be fixed. If there's some problems, we fix them and we kind of forget about that vehicle and we go on to the next one. A software defined vehicle, we're gonna keep thinking about that vehicle. We're gonna keep making it better for our customers, keep delivering new capability to our customers. And that means that the software de defined vehicle becomes more valued over time by its owners. If you want to know more, please visit our website for the support of software defined vehicle concepts across Vectors products and also case studies explaining some of the concepts. Watch out for our events and articles in this new area as well. Make sure to join me after the music if you want to know more or have any questions or want to contact us in any way. See you soon.
Really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Engineering the Jigsaw. Make sure you, if you have, you give it a thumbs up in YouTube. If you have questions or ideas, then give us a comment down below the video. If you don't want to do it in public, if you want to keep it private, then drop us an email to our special email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. You can find a link to a web page with those contact details on in the description for this video. Make sure that you subscribe to get notified as we release new episodes and as Vector publishes its excellent and informative videos on its YouTube channel. Make sure to check out our playlists. We have our foundation episodes playlist and also intermediate level playlist as well for you to binge and catch up with. We'll catch you for another episode soon. Goodbye.